Hey, hello, Hermax here. I've been guilty of not testing Linux Mint on a desktop for almost 10 years. Yeah, 10 years. And listen to me, I've been playing with it for the last 24 hours on my main rig. And dude, this Linux distribution has so much to offer. But it depends for who. Now let's get into it. Let's start with a little bit of context. A lot of desktop users are taking advantage of Linux Mint on a daily basis. This operating system is really designed to work out of the box and come with a lot of apps. I'm not usually testing any of the distribution because my approach toward distribution is a little, little bit different of all the, the users, I guess. Um, I do believe that you can take whatever distribution and transform it into whatever you want. But I do understand that some users want to have like a really good experience out of the box. And Linux Mint come really strong on that. I have to say, I really like the vision of their team and what they bring on the table. I think one of the most really strong points coming out from this distribution is their desktop environment. Cinnamon, I hope I'm pronouncing this word correctly, is a really good uh, desktop environment developed by the Linux Mint team. It's really slick. It's really simple. When you go to the settings, there is really nothing crazy about it. And I think this is what bring its power. It's not highly customizable like a KDE, for example, but it give it, it goes, it really goes to the main point and I would say like uh, tackle them in a really simple and efficient way. If you are a new user coming to Linux from another uh, operating system like Windows or Mac, I believe this is the direction you want to take because there is not a lot of um, option that's going to draw you into uh, a very complex approach. It's really simple, straight to the point, and uh, honestly, I, I kind of like it. Now, in terms of performance, is this working as good as a KDE uh, desktop environment? We'll see later in the video, but you, you have my point here. So now let's talk about the simplicity of use of the distribution and what I think are the really key points that are going to push you towards the use of this distro. The, the first one is the ability to install driver without never have to open a terminal. And listen to me, this is great. Obviously, you know me, I'm actually like using Linux Mint. Uh, let me show you. This is Linux Mint. It's pretty, pretty good. So let, let me show you. If you think about uh, the installation process, and everything related to it, it was super simple. It was super fast. Didn't have to spend a lot of time on it. Coming up from different distro I had to try before. If you use NVIDIA card like I do, it can become pretty troublesome <laughs> to get your NVIDIA driver working. But here it was a breeze. So I, I'm, I'm going to show you uh, exactly how, how it went. So you have a system settings here. And when you start for the first time after installing everything, uh, you can go in it and click on driver manager. It's going to be looking for driver and you're going to be using the video nouveau driver. And those are pretty limited, but they're going to give you, you know, like the access to the interface. And then what you have to do is pretty simple. Like you click here, boom, apply change, reboot, and you're done. So this, my friend, is great, okay? If you are new to Linux and you have no idea what to do, how to do it, and you don't want to have, again, a headache, I'm going to use this word a lot during this video. This is the way. Second point, when it's done, this little icon is going to show up here. And sorry, I'm, I'm like clicking a little bit too much here. I'm, I'm going to have to calm down my enthusiasm. And you can change everything. You can play with it. Management of driver, Linux means it's a plus. Second point I really want to talk about is how to install application. So again, if you are new to Linux, I believe this is one of the best options I've seen. We're going to do it the Windows way. Like if you come from Windows, this is literally how it works. <laughs> you tap application, you're going to have software manager here. And this, this software manager is just 
crazy good. Let's say you want to uh, install OBS to create content like I've, I've just done. It comes with multiple options. You have OBS here, you see it, and you have OBS here. And if you look at the detail, it's going to be OBS installed from the packages or installed from FlatHub. So you're going to be asking me like, Air Max, what? Why are they proposing that? Like, I, I don't want that. You know, I'm a art user, by the way. And the way I do things is pretty simple. When I want to install something, I install Ye or Paru or whatever, I go to the whore and I compile it myself. Yeah, that's right. But most of the new users, they have no idea what I'm talking about. And they want an easy option to get into the Linux world. And I think this is really good. So let's say you want to install OBS Studio and you have no idea what you are doing. You click on that. You look at this and you have the name of the package, the version of the package, and just to press a button here. If you know a little bit about OBS Studio because you are a content creator, you will look at this and you'll be like, hey, it doesn't look like this is the la latest version of OBS Studio. Why is that? Well, maybe because we need to install the Flatpak version. And yes, 29.1.1. Simple as that. You click one button, install, and you are in. You have OBS Studio, which is fully up-to-date, working, has no issue, uh, have a, a browser in it for people who know. They know. <laughs> they don't have to compile that. This, this is really good. That, in my opinion, is a second like really advantage that Linux Mint has over like distribution. Is really his approach to be able to install driver or software without having to use the command line. So I was mentioning the easiness of the desktop environment. Uh, let me give you an example. All the shortcuts are the same as the one on, on Windows. So, you, you know, if you come from Windows, you, you, won't, you, you won't see the difference. Another really good point for Linux Mint is the fact that the updates are super easy to manage and you never have to open the terminal. Let me show you. Uh, here it's really similar to Windows. Uh, you have the, the start menu here. And if you go down there, you have the taskbar. On the taskbar, you have this little icon here. You click on it and you have what they call like an update manager. This application is really fun. It kind of like check the update which are required for your system, but not only check for your normal packages, but it's also check for flat up. So if you use the other um, tool that I was showing you before, and you have an update through Flatpak, well, you just, just check there, you have a notification at the bottom, you press the uh, install update and it's gonna install them in a super easy way. No terminal. That's that's really good. So now let's talk about the what I would call like the negative, which are like negative for me as a gamer and as a content creator. It's not as bad as a type of like issue you will encounter on a uh, arch uh, type of of distribution, because because it's based on Debian slash Ubuntu, and I think it's a LTS like type of approach, like super stable. It's not a rolling release type of approach. You, you won't have those big, you know, like breakerage, which, which happened in the middle of nowhere after an update, which is cool. But you're gonna, the, the ISO come with like, I would say pretty deprecated like kernel and sometime a pretty deprecated software. So obviously an easy way to to move around like the software issue is, is to use a flat pack. And that I'm, I'm okay with it. But there is some configuration and package you can't use through flat pack. Let me give you an example, the kernel. So if you look at the kernel, which is like delivered out of the box uh, with this distribution, it's a 5.15.0-56. Uh, it's a pretty old kernel. Then they, when you when you upgrade the system after the install, it will give you the 5.15 like uh, 0 72. So I, I'm pretty sure it's a it's LTS kernel. You can go up to 519. Woohoo! 
And again, I have nothing against that. But what I do believe is like, if you are a gamer, you're going to run into trouble because those kernel, they, are, they won't give you the best performance. What you want is upgrade the kernel to have access to the best feature. So that's what I've done. I just upgrade it. But it's something you have to think about because if you install this distribution and you install Steam and you're like, oh yeah, good, I'm going to have fun. Yeah, the game might run, but they might not run as fast as they are supposed to. So install the kernel. You have to do it manually, and especially a custom kernel. There is alternative to this one. If you are interested in how to improve that, I could make a video about it. Just, just make a little comment uh, below and I will make a, a, a little series on that. Another problem I encountered was the management of the sound. So let me, let me show you. I'm using a pretty complex mixer. has a lot of entry, a lot of output. Uh, it needs PipeWire to run as the best of its potential. This distribution comes with PipeWire actually. But it doesn't come with the whole, like, I will say, like, tool related to PipeWire. So le let me show you. So PipeWire, you have a, a first layer, which is PipeWire, and you need a second layer under called, like, Wire Plumber, which help you to make the link between, like, your um, hardware and pi PipeWire. What I noticed is, like, Wire pl Plumber was not installed out of the box, so I had to install it. And something even, like, more, I would say, strange, is that when I went to my ETC folder, so this is my, my geek approach, okay, because I had to deal with it on Arch. When you have to deal with a problem on Arch, you have to dig really deep into it and know exactly how it works to solve it. And I have to say, like, it, it's kind of helpful, to be fair, because I solved this one in less than 10 minutes. When you go there, so let, let me do that and grab pipe uh, wire. You will see, like, I have a folder called PipeWire, okay? But this folder, I had to create it because this distribution comes with PipeWire, but it doesn't come with all the files related to the configuration of PipeWire on the hard drive, which is mind-blowing to me. So I had to create it. Uh, I had to create like the, the special like config, what they call like a virtual sync to make it work. This type of distribution is going to really help you and facilitate the overall approach toward Linux. But depending on your hardware, you might have some work to do. To be fair, there is a lot of like users using this distribution. If you have a problem, just go on their forum and try to your, find your way out of your problem. I'm pretty sure people are going to help you. Just keep in mind that you might still have little issue. This is really particular. I don't think you have this type of uh, <laughs> uh, sound card and that's okay. I'm pretty sure if you have a normal sound card, like, you know, the one in your motherboard, it's going to be pretty smooth but this is just an example telling you that yes it's easy but you want you might have still to go there and and work a little bit uh, so now the question you are certainly all asking can linux mean play games spoiler alert it does and it actually does really well so you are still compiling the shader here i'm using exactly the same settings that i will use on my main we are in Ultra and uh, 1414p at 270 Hz full screen. So right now I'm compiling the shader, okay? And I'm at true 300, 330 FPS. And this is, I think, one of the most important like outcome of this video. The Cinnamon desktop environment is really, really good. It's not I would say as performant as a, as a KDE, because if you look at my FPS right now while recording, they are not as high as my Arch Linux, but it's pretty, pretty good. Um, it's really stable. And I, nice I do job. believe that my FPS are a little bit lower because of the way like uh, OBS is capturing my screen right now. I can't really prove it, but if I stop the recording and I take a screenshot, which I'm going to do, you will see my FPS are going to be way, way higher. What a surprise. I went into this test thinking that uh, Linux Mint will be a bloated version of Ubuntu. And yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of Ubuntu at all. Ubuntu desktop. Uh, but man, has been a really, really fun experience. 
So I, I did try other games. I want to go like with all the game I tried. I tried V Rising. I tried um, Apex Legend. I show you Overwatch there. I would say overall, this distribution is really, really good if you want to switch from Windows to, to Linux. What it is really is a Windows of steroids. You have the advantage of having a Linux backhand. I would say advantage. No blot. You can easily uh, customize it without having a huge headache. It's it's super simple, like to you know increase your FPS. They have a super responsive uh, desktop environment and super responsive gaming experience. That's for sure. You can install your driver like like that without having any headache and i would say like th this is the way to go guys this is the way to go um if you want uh, highest granularity of customization if you want to go deeper if you already know the tools if you know how to you know get there get your hand dirty and you are not scared of having your system totally break i would say go with arch Personally, I'm going to stay with Arch. But if you are not there yet, or you just you just don't want to waste your time, and I get it, okay? I'm not judging you. Go with Linux Mint. I'm super impressed. And if you want me to do a little series of Linux Mint and tell you and show you what needs to be done to have this level of performance, and, you know, it, it won't be a long series because <laughs> it's it's pretty straightforward. I can do it for you guys. You know, switching the kernel, making sure uh, you are running, uh, for example, pipe wire the right way, uh, making sure that you know what you are doing when installing like Lutris and stuff and running your last, latest game. I can do that for you. It won't be a really long series for sure because there is not too much, I believe, to go through because everything is pretty good out of the box, but I can help you doing that. So don't hesitate to, to let a, a comment below and ask me whatever you feel like I, I should do for you guys but i would say linux mint is super good right now again if you like what you are watching don't hesitate uh, to subscribe like the video uh, please come to my discord we have a really good community there if you want to help me financially please uh, do i have a patreon you can jump the membership here on, on youtube uh, don't hesitate to help me because I really need your help to continue this type of video. And yeah, that's it. That's all. Uh, see you in the next one. And really, like, don't hesitate to, to try this Linux Mint. It, it's actually really, really good. Take care, guys. Bisous, bisous.